Hello everyone, welcome back here to the channel Stapa Ulha Azul and Super Academico. And today we'll keep the reading of my book Phenomena. And today we're doing we're going to do uh, something different, experimentation here. We I'm going to play uh, uh, the reading by the, the the AI AI from here of the from the the the, the edition the edition app. So uh, enjoy the, the, this reading. Uh, I test it out. It's it's okay. The reading is better than mine. <laughs> and let's go. Let's go to this chapter seven of Phenomena. Don't forget to subscribe both channels. Give the likes, uh, comment, share, and and so on. And that's it. Friday's dinner after I'd been in school for two weeks. My father had returned from a three-day trip to New Haven. He'd gone to Yale to give a speech. That was a very unique opportunity we had to gather around the table and eat as a family. Mom, as usual, reserved a chair for Donnie, as if she wanted to pay homage to him. I sometimes stared at that empty seat in hopes to see him again, but that never happened. My sister was the last one to sit at the table. So, Mr. Casanova, who are you going out with tonight? I stopped my fork as it was halfway into my mouth. I looked at Dad, but he seemed not to have heard the question. What do you mean? I heard that you went out with Betsy Monroe. Last Friday. So, I thought you may already have another company for tonight. My father continued to ignore the conversation. And's ironical tone made me very nervous, but I tried to be politically correct. She asked me out because of her interest in phenomena. Dad glanced quickly at Mom. And are you, by any chance, an expert in that subject already? No, but I am very interested. Our parents were still eating quietly while and began to help herself to some food. But you're going out tonight, aren't you? I saw the outfit on your bed. Dad finally looked at me. Gosh. I am going to a lecture on campus. Eddie invited me. Dad finally said something. What is the lecture on, Joseph? The question silenced and jibe, but I wished that Dad had not asked that question. Well, Dad. It's about. Paranormality. That doesn't say a whole lot to me. And I really meant to say nothing. How could I explain to a skeptic one like my father that I would go listen to two men speak about photographing souls from the other world? I don't know for sure, Dad. I'm going there to find out. Eddie said the speakers have published books. They're written in German, though. All right, then. I hope you like it. Dad never interfered in our choices. He supported Donnie when he went to the boot camp. He also gave his full support to Anne when she decided to major in social service. And now he's supporting me. However, in my case, it felt as though as if he had a question stuck halfway down his throat, what are you going to do with a degree in parapsychology? And, no matter how I answered to that, it would never sound clear or even rational to him. But I just knew that he would never ask that. He would simply support me through the end. We remained quiet till we'd all finished dinner. Then we all had desert and, after that, actually during desert, Wayne came in and picked up N. It was funny how that guy changed the atmosphere at our home. While I was putting on my clothes, I would hear him and dad talking about politics and economics. They sounded like two walking-talking machines. I wasn't jealous. After all, my dad deserved to be around people who had similar interests to his. Yet, that did bother N for. Every time they'd start talking, it would take forever for them to leave the house. But, in spite of all that, I think Wayne had filled in the void left by the absence of Donnie. I said goodbye to everybody and couldn't resist cracking a final joke. Some lecture, right, brother? I looked at her before I went out and said, I hope they start talking about Nixon. Nixon! exclaimed Dad. Then and looked at me with no more irony in her eyes. As for me? Enjoy your evening, sister. I left knowing she would have to bar with another 20 minutes of conversation and that was enough for her to learn how to keep her funny comments her herself. I got in the car with a wide open smile on my face, but I and also felt sorry for her. Nevertheless, I immediately started to focus onto the topic of the lecture. It was true that the two lecturers had only published books written in German, but Eddie got me some translated summaries from one of his professors. The method that the two scientists suggested to photograph a spectrum was similar to the way you take a regular picture. The difference was in 
The way the film captured a light frequency different from the one used for ordinary materials, which are a thousand times faster. It was a somewhat difficult thing to understand, but I think it is something similar to what happened on TV when Donnie showed up. On the screen, an electric current generated by the extra-dimensional passage, or even like the lightning. Episode on Betsy's Farm I could hardly wait to hear what those men had to say. The physics department's auditorium was packed. The interest in parapsychology was not so big, but everyone who was interested in that subject seemed to have been there that night. I spotted Eddie as soon as I got to the main entrance. He waved at me. He was surrounded by friends. Since he was a very cheerful and talkative guy, he was always surrounded by lots of people. However, he always managed to pay special attention to a friend. Both of us dribbled a lot of people in order that we could meet up in the middle of the audience. E. Joe. I was just waiting for you to come. I have great news. What is it? I had no idea of what could be. They will hand out information on a test that will take six students from here to attend summer school in Frankfurt at the end of the year. My eyes shone. It was a great chance to see the place where the German philosopher Hegel had the paranormal experience that changed his life, like what happened. To me. And what will be on this test? You got me? General knowledge about the spiritual world? Eddie, be serious. I'd really like to go. I know. That's why I'm telling you about this. People here aren't very considerate with freshmen. You would probably find out about that only on the day of the test. He was right though. Thank you, man. And what about you, aren't you going to give it a shot? I don't think so. Germany is not the kind of place I would like to visit. Besides, I always end up having to take a makeup test at the end of the school term. I laughed at the laid-back way he looked at things. Come on. Let's sit down. As soon as they start. To pass out the brochures, I'll grab one for you. Okay. Then we proceeded towards the seats. Hey Joe. Look who's here. I turned around and saw Betsy. We waved at each other. We became friends. Eddie was like Anne. He would never miss out on anything. We sat down and waited for the lecture to start. Eddie and I were sitting right up front, in the third row, along with other senior students. The few students from my classes that I saw in that area were also sitting by the seniors. I figured the rest of them were somewhere in the back. Poor freshmen. The first row was totally taken by the professors from the departments of parapsychology, psychology and physics. They probably wanted to show how interested and informed about the subject they were. Yet, as far as I knew, none of them had ever witnessed any phenomenon like I did. And nowadays I believe that is the only thing that really does away with any. Doubts a scholar might have, like what happened to the physicists around the world when the first atomic bomb was used. There is nothing more efficient in order to prove a theory than the witnessed evidence of its truthfulness. The two German scientists finally arrived and began to lecture. We had to count on the help of translators, because they spoke in German. In a way, it was frustrating for me. They thought a complete lesson on photography and exhibited some slides with certain white stains that they tried to convince us that were spectra. Whether or not they really were. Ghosts I don't know. All I do know is that many people went back home without having bought into the paranormal phenomena recording business. As for me, I found the technical aspect of their lecture. Rather elementary, but I think the scientists themselves didn't know exactly what they were doing. Anyway, they gave us food for thought. At the end they passed. Out brochures containing information about the test to sophomore students like Eddie. He gave me his. Indeed, in my opinion, that had been the only actual. Profit in the whole entire evening. Now I had to rush to prepare for it. After all, the test would be given. Out within two months and I would have to compete with seniors. I thanked Eddie again while we were. Leaving. When we got to the exit, I greeted some of the professors that had helped me get in Harvard and then headed home. Ever since that evening, I couldn't stop thinking on how all those things said and studied by such serious and strict people were so familiar to me, an 18-year-old boy. What they dealt with as theory, I looked at as a very practical thing. I wonder. How many people in the world have this perspective? I never dared to feel superior to any of those people, but the truth was that with my awareness regarding. My brother's vision, a lot of things was forthcoming. So guys, 
that's it for the reading for this chapter, chapter seven. I hope you have enjoyed the reading by the AI. I actually enjoyed not because not, not just because it I have to speak, but because it sounds very nice, very nice. And don't forget to subscribe both channels, give the like, comment, share, and keep reading, keep watching the videos in both channels. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Thank you.